Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lori. Um, thank you all for being here and taking time to learn a little bit about our program and our training over here. Um, I hope this will be useful and hopefully a little interactive more towards the end. I do want to introduce my colleague here. I have Maria with me. Sorry, we had some technical issues, so we'll be joining <laughs> together and trying to share the screen. But Maria is my colleague. She is a past student and graduate of our training program, and she is also currently our CNC training co-instructor. So she will be speaking a little bit about her experience with the training and, and offering some of her own insight as well. So I will go ahead. I'm going to share my screen with you all. Just one moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So to start, um, I would like to give a little bit of context into human made as a whole to give a little bit of physical and relational perspective um, as we discuss the training of what that actually looks like here on site. So we will start with just an introduction. Um, so human made is San Francisco's first advanced manufacturing training center. We do have the most extensive and open access design, fabrication, and prototyping facilities here on site. So <clears throat> we are a combination of a training facility, a manufacturing facility, and a prototyping facility where we have folks who are either attending our training as students, um, we have members who also utilize the, the maker space as a whole um, and really come together as a community. Across both, so within Human Made as a Whole and the training, <clears throat> our mission is really to empower our community and help uplift our community to engage in the manufacturing sector um, and to bring more equitable access to facilities such as this, and the training skills and tools that come along with that. So we'll go ahead and take a look just to give an idea of what we actually look like. Um, so here you can see our main maker space. This is our community area. <clears throat> Within here we have um, a computer bank where students, members, staff can access all of the software that's really important in designing and manufacturing. We also have some shared workspaces. So this is where our community really comes together. Um, we have, again, students who work on their own projects. We have members who come in who are building their own businesses. We have folks who come in um, as hobbyists and are working on their own interests. And this is where all of that happens. Um, we see our community really join in this space and we see a lot of collaboration, um, a lot of innovation. So folks are working on incredible world changing products and materials here. And we get to witness that together and also see across different businesses and spaces, folks really supporting each other um, continuing to educate and, and collaborate and problem solve together to make those things happen. Within this space, we also have a full textile area. So we have industrial sewing machines. We have a silk screen station. We have a vinyl cutter. Um, we have a 3D printing bank out there, um, as well as a laser cutting station um, <clears throat> all the way in the back, you can't see it as well, but we have two um, large laser cutters back there as well. So a lot of different things happening up here. All of this is open to our students and our members. And then moving here, we also have a full metal, metal shop. So you can see the two pictures on the left right there. Um, those give 
you know, somewhat of an overview <laughs> of, of all of the equipment we have in our metal shop. We have saws and mills. Um, we have our large Tormox CNC machine, which we utilize in the training itself. And then on the right hand side, we have a little bit of a snapshot of our wood shop. So we have a full wood shop on site as well um, with the lathe, table saws, um, two large shop bot machines, which are CNC machines for wood. <clears throat> um, we do offer workshops and classes in both of these areas as well to create some fundamental training um, across skills and materials. And so going a little bit into the training itself. So the next generation manufacturing training is a workforce development program that's housed in human made. So we, um, we work with community members in San Francisco and Alameda County to really help prepare them for careers in the manufacturing sector. Um, our, our goal with, with this program is again, to create equitable access to training and skill building and professional development. Um, we are very, very committed to creating a more diverse and inclusive manufacturing sector in the Bay Area. Um, so this training is specifically designed to do that and to equip individuals who have no experience um, at all in manufacturing with the skills that are going to set them up for success in entry level positions in the manufacturing sector. So as far as eligibility for our training, the main requirements are 18 years and older. So we currently cannot accept um, adolescents or, or children into the program, though we hope to expand that shortly in the future. <laughs> um, we also accept students who are residents of San Francisco and Alameda counties. Again, really hoping to expand that in the future, but we're just not quite there yet. Um, and then all of our students are low income to extremely low income. As a workforce development program, we are geared towards helping folks become more financially um, independent and have sustainable careers. So our students overall, aside from that criteria, really represent our communities. Um, we have a very diverse um, population of students and graduates across many different lines. So our students come from various backgrounds, experiences, goals. Um, I think currently about 73% uh, of our students identify as BIPOC, 30% uh, identify as female, 9% uh, identify as gender non-binary. We have students from the re-entry population, students who are veterans, um, students who are immigrants or refugees. So we really are committed to serving the actual community that we exist within. So the training itself just logistically is, it's a three month training, so 12 week sessions. We have new trainings that start every three months. So our upcoming training is beginning in January, January 17th, and it will end in April. <clears throat> um, there's no cost to the training, all materials, all tuition, everything is provided on site. And that includes daily meals for all of our students as well. Students have the choice between the CNC machining or the additive 3D printing class. So CNC machining, which Maria can probably share a little more information about than me, um, but it is our computer numerical control machining. So we do CNC machining with metal. A lot of our product is done with aluminum and students will learn how to operate 
operate the computer software required to um, transfer the design to the actual CNC machine to create a final product. Do you have anything you want to add to that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that is very true. It's like um, you actually go from concept to, um, to something tangible. You are taking a piece of metal or actually you are learning a bit of CAD where you draw and sketch out the, um, the design that you're going to cut out. Then you're going to learn to CAM, which is you out, figure out the tool paths in which you're going to cut out the, the metal from because you're you know, you just can't plow through a piece of metal with, you know, without knowing that kind of, um, I guess, that instruction. And then finally, you you actually machine your part and you come out from a raw piece of material to basically a part. Yes. So that's CNC machining. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and then with 3D printing, it is very similar actually. So students will learn how to design within the software, troubleshoot within the software and transfer <clears throat> their design, their vision into a final product with the 3D printing machine. So students get really well-rounded training in the, those skills, as well as troubleshooting, operating and maintaining the equipment. Um, and reading blueprints. So kind of a, a cross the board skills required for a lot of the entry level positions that our students obtain. And then finally, we do also support students in taking the Autodesk certification exam. So this is more of an industry recognized certificate that students can receive either in the CNC machining side or the 3D printing side. We primarily support this by offering some preparation throughout the training, study materials, as well as funding the, the exam if students choose to take it and helping with the logistics of scheduling it on site here if necessary or helping students access uh, testing sites. So here I've just included a few examples of our student projects. So all of the projects on this screen are from the CNC machining class, and they've all been completed by our students. So you see they've made dice, um, there's a wrench, um, as well as a bucket. Yeah, just yeah. the part, like if you were to find in the real world, or if you were to, I guess, go into um, working as a machinist, you know, you would make parts. This doesn't, it's not actually a real part for something, but it's something like it. And then here you can see some examples of the student projects from the 3D printing class. So we've, you know, we try to keep <clears throat> the skills really diverse. So from making parts that have moving pieces and that need to be really well fitting to parts that are aesthetically uh, pleasing and, and um, accurate. Mm -hmm. And so for me, my side or role in, in this training program is as the client support and outreach coordinator. So the, the next generation manufacturing training really takes a holistic and individualized approach to promoting career success. We recognize that there's much more to obtaining employment than just the hard skills, as well as there are a lot of challenges or uh, systemic barriers that present themselves in different ways for folks as they're pursuing a career. So, my job is to work with students on that end. We do a lot of work on resume and cover letter writing, um, designing professional portfolios. So all of our students will create their own portfolio of their own work throughout the training to carry on and present with them as they move forward in their careers. We prepare for interviews, as well as other job readiness activities, communication, things of that nature. 
And then ongoing barrier mitigation and case management. So I meet with each student regularly, usually weekly, to discuss things that may be coming up outside of the training or within life that either are challenging or creating some strain in attending the training or just um, hindering student well being. So, case management can range from housing resources to financial resources, obtaining medications or mental health support, um, or accessing childcare. And then following the completion of the training, students will receive employment placement assistance. So we help to keep students updated regularly with employment opportunities in the community and help them to complete the application process as well as advocate for them with employers. We also continue to follow up with our students for a full year after they graduate. So even if a student has obtained employment, we'll continue to check in, make sure that they have all of the support that they need to continue to be successful, to continue to feel uh, satisfied in their employment and, and make sure that we're a part of that process with them. So here are a few examples of some of the companies, <clears throat> excuse me, that have hired our students. So you can see, you know, a, a diverse set of companies here. We have um, Human Made, I believe, is up there. So we've hired a few of our own students to carry on with education and instruction. Um, we have some students with Coco Taps, for example, who have created a sustainable way to uh, consume coconut water with less package, packaging um, that's much more ecologically friendly. So changing, changing expectations around um, product packaging. Um, we have students with Swope Design Solutions who do amazing work with uh, consumer and client spe specific products. So they work on a very wide variety of products depending on the demand of, of their clients. So those are a few there. We also have a student recently who's started working for Doer Marine. And this is a company who is doing deep marine or creating products for deep marine exploration and research and monitoring. So they work on robotics and monitoring devices to continue exploring all of the potential in our marine life. And with that, I will pass it over to Maria for just a moment to go ahead and just share a little bit about her experience with the training, um, anything that, you know, she She's felt either during the training or since completing the training. Um, so yes, I will hand it over to you, Maria. Hello. Oh my gosh, that was a surprise. I just didn't know about this, this slide. Um, but anyway, I guess uh, just a little bit about me and there's probably a little bit. Of, um, I came here and took the class because actually because of a career change, you know, I, it was unfortunate that I was laid off from my job of being there for a very, very long time, which I had loved, um, but they had relocated down to LA. Um, and then I found this program. Um, even I was in this program, I started in September of 2019, I believe. And even within the past two years, it has really developed. Um, what, the students are learning now, which I was in the CNC cohort uh, for the machining is, uh, I learned a little bit of CAD, I learned a little bit of CAM, I did some machining, and now I see as being a co-teacher, 
um, which is very interesting, is like learning actually the fundamentals of being a CNC machinist or to be in, a mach in the machinist industry. So uh, they get to learn how to do things like tramming the vise, making sure it's straight, um, even edge finding, making sure like your coordinates of where you're going to, um, where your part is going to start to cut and all that kind of stuff, where that, um, those are just like fundamental things that machinists should know where I didn't know at first, and now I'm, I too am still learning. Um, not only that they get to learn how to use the CNC Tormach, but they also learn how to use, we also have a manual mill. So that's also like right before uh, the, the Tormach or CNC machining is computer and numeric control. Manual mills are the same thing, but um, it's prior to that kind of computer technology. It's more of the way, if you look at the picture, that's a manual mill. And the way that it is controlled is like an Etch-a-Sketch. So you're, you're actually turning the, lev the levers, one for X, one for Y, and one for Z. And, um, and also learning um, how to use the metal shop, um, just like handles in general. And just for them, uh, for students to get comfortable in. And um, even with that, um, there is also, as um, Amber had mentioned, there's a wood shop, there's laser cutters, there's 3D printers, um, there's an industrial, like industrial sewing. So um, the students do have access to that as well, um, which is kind of a nice thing to be able to, you know, be in this kind of space where there are creatives. Um, so it's, yeah, it's really like, it's a very positive experience. And like, I was lucky enough, or, you know, like I said, the stars had aligned that night only, um, like I was able to like discover this place and take the training, but also um, to be able to have the opportunity to work here. And now again, um, assisting with the CNC students, which is like, I've never thought thought about it before, but it's so like, um, it's so, it's, it's refreshing. And it's like, um, it's, oh, I don't know what the word is, but it's always very at the tip of my tongue that it's like, I feel a lot of, um, I can't think of it right now, but sorry about that. But, um, but yeah, gratifying, you know, and it's just great to help people. Okay, and that's it. <laughs> that was it's always awesome to hear, hear from you. So one thing actually, and I'm really grateful that you brought this up again, Maria, that I realized I skipped over, but part of continuing to promote the success of our students and to really continue their career development and upskilling is that all of our students, once they graduate, they receive a full year membership with the, the makerspace as a whole. And that includes access to free workshops. So if students take the CNC class and they you know, would like to learn more about woodworking to diversify their skill set, they have access to those workshops and that support um, continuing on after their graduation as well. And then it's, as far as applying, so anyone who is interested is always welcome to apply or reach out. There are multiple ways to do this. The most probably efficient way is to visit our website and to complete an inquiry form. So those responses come directly to us and we will then reach out via email to welcome folks in for a tour, um, an info session, and then we can support them in completing the application from there if they're continued to be interested. Folks can also email us directly at nextgenapplications at humanmade.org. That also comes to us. Um, but it is helpful to have the inquiry form as well. 
And then anyone who has questions or is interested is also welcome to call us directly. I have our phone number there, um, and I will also share these slides with Lori at the end so everybody has access to them uh, afterwards. And then with that, I will open it up for any questions that folks have or comments or things that maybe we didn't cover. Um, so yes, I will hand it back over to you, Lori. Yes, we have a couple of questions uh, from chat. The first question is from Dave. How would you compare human mate to tech shop, which used to be in Meadow Park and I think San Francisco? Yes, yes, thank you. That's a great question. It's one that comes up often. Um, so I, I was not involved in tech shop, so I am a little limited in how I answer this, but I will do my best. So Human Made was really designed and developed uh, with the mission to be different than traditional maker spaces. So there was a historical model that maker spaces were built upon um, that's that served um, members. They served members and they, <clears throat> they, they, sorry, I'm trying to think about how to best <laughs> answer this question. Um, this historically were created to provide certain types of training and spaces and were built upon community um, and collaboration, but weren't always accessible to all folks. Um, Human Made was really designed to take the best part of that and to spread it out and bring in this additional piece of training and equity and access. Um, so it, it has some pieces of traditional maker spaces with the addition of building upon reaching our community, being an active member in our community, and really bolstering the economic um, sustainability within our communities here. So I hope that that answered your question. Th thank you, Ember. Um, question from Linda: uh, How how do you compare how do you compare to the junior college programs? Yes, so we that's a it's a little bit of a challenging uh, question. So it depends on the track that the student is on. So the classes themselves that folks can take to learn you know, a skill or an area, we are similar in a lot of regards with more focus on the hands-on training as well as the soft skill development and barrier mitigation. So we bring in a little bit more of a holistic aspect to rapid training. If a student were on the path to a certification or a um, degree, in a certain type of design or manufacturing, we are again similar, but on a fast track. So we're focused on intensive wraparound training to get people set up for entry into the manufacturing sector quickly. Okay, thank you so much, Ember. Question from Margaret. How many days um, each week do you, students need to uh, come for the training? Oh, fantastic question, Margaret. Thank you. I can't believe I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So our training is Monday to Friday. We have the CNC and 3D printing run side by side. So we have the CNC machining class Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. So it's about four and a half hours every day. Um, and then we have the 3D printing again, Monday to Friday from 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Great, thank you so much. Um, another question from Dave, who provides funding for Human Made to offer this training free to students? Yes, so we are a nonprofit workforce development agency. So our funding comes from a variety of sources. Um, that would be through grants, 
um, through the community here. Um, we've worked with various organizations um, who have contributed to the training and, and provided financial funding as well. So it, it comes from a variety of, of locations. Thank you. Which of the employers you mentioned have higher students who completed your um, additive 3D printing training program? Yes, so a few of them, and I'll actually, I'll go back to that slide just to see. Um, so we've had a few of them. We've had Swope Design Solutions has hired for um, 3D printing. I believe Coco Taps as well. Um, so far, Ocean has worked with us. Intrinsic. Um, Tempo, Tempo Automation as well. And a lot of these companies tend to have multiple manufacturing processes or skills. So they may hire from the CNC and the 3D printing track, depending on what they need support with at that time. Oh yeah. Thank you. Uh, question from uh, Liz. Did you say you only serve residents of San Francisco and Alameda counties? Um, I live in San Mateo County. Yes, so unfortunately right now, because we are a younger program, we are limited to residents in San Francisco and Alameda counties. We are really hoping to be able to expand that out and open it to residents of other communities in the future. Um, but we're just, we're not quite there yet. So hopeful and definitely we'll make sure that people are informed when we are able to open it up further. Thank you. Question from Sue. Can you do both CNC and 3D? Ah, yes, that's a, that's a great question uh, that comes up often. So we tend to not have students cross from one training to another or to take both. The main reason for that being um, that we want to increase access for more folks to come in and to get the fundamental skills. We are limited with space. So right now we can take in about 20 students per training. So we want to be able to bring in as many people as possible. However, with that being said, there are some processes that are similar between the two. So both trainings will receive uh, instruction in the Fusion 360 software. So taking one training will provide some skills for another, for the other training. And then paired with one of our workshops uh, that are you know, open in the, the main maker space will provide a pretty good foundation for being able to use either. Um, but yeah, we, we tend to not have students take repeated trainings. Got, got it. Thank you so much. Question from Margaret. Uh, how do students who have no experience decide which program to enroll? Yes. So <laughs> sometimes they don't. <laughs> um, one great way to approach that is we always welcome students in first before they apply. So we can show them more of the equipment, the products. Um, sometimes they're able to meet the instructors and that tends to give much more perspective on if somebody's really drawn to one or the other. With that being said, there are times that we have students who are interested in either one and that's totally okay. And we will work to get them in where space is most available. <clears throat> um, and we do try to get students into the training that if they are drawn to one or the other, we try to get them into that one. But again, there are times that students aren't really sure and that's okay. Okay, thank you so much, Ember. Um, that's all the question I see in chat. Um, if anyone who has other question, please feel free to put in chat or unmute yourself and ask a uh, question.
And if we don't have uh, more question, then I um, like to thank um, um, my guests, uh, Ember and Maria. Thank you so much for taking the time to, oh, I have a, <laughs> I have a question from Dave. How many students have gone through the program? More questions, yes. Yes, so we have had um, completed students. We have had about 137 students who have gone through the program. Um, and then with that, we have about 69% have been employed and 49% in the manufacturing sector. Okay, great. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Linda, uh, you should be able to unmute now. I accidentally uh, unchecked that box. Uh, Linda, you can go ahead and ask your question. Okay, thank you. No, I was just, um, because I do have a factory and I'm trying to figure out how to hire some of these, but we look, we're looking for maintenance technicians. So not necessarily machinists, just in, uh, people that can service our machines. And definitely they had with knowledge in a little bit of welding. Okay. Would you be the side to look at or? Yeah, yeah, that would be fantastic. So we are always looking to also serve our manufacturers and our companies and agencies within the community. Um, and, you know, our students have a wide variety of skills and abilities that they leave here with. So that would that would definitely be something we would be interested in discussing and trying to connect you with some candidates. That, that uh, would be great because uh, I'm also on the Chabot um, junior college advisory board for their tech program. Oh, and, awesome. and that's what the, one of the things that we're always looking for, the, the soft skills in yeah. uh, with employees and also a little bit of welding and the cool. equipment. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Linda, let's, um, let's try to connect. Um, I will, I'm going to put my direct email in the chat as well for everyone <clears throat> so that if you have questions that come up after you can also reach out to me directly and then um linda yes let's let's try to connect afterwards okay we'll do thank you thank you any more questions for ember and maria If not, then um, I'd like to thank uh, Amber and Maria again. We really appreciate you taking the time to share with us about um, the next gen uh, manufacturing training program. Um, I also want to thank everyone for joining. I hope you find the presentation informative and helpful to you. I will send out an evaluation survey together with Amber's slide deck, a link to um, the recording, uh, also um, including the, the chat questions uh, later this afternoon. Uh, please give us your feedback so we can continue to improve. Um, again, thank you everyone and have a wonderful rest of your day. Yes. Bye bye now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.